imagine a day when machines walk among us, expressing thoughts, emotions, demanding their rights. Today, we are breathing intelligence, perhaps soon even life, into creatures of silicon and steel. A whole new breed of robots is on the rise. And the line between man and machine is starting to blur. Robots and androids are no longer just figments of our imaginations. With more than a million of them at work around the world, we are now at a watershed moment. A moment when science fiction becomes reality. And children's dreams come true. Welcome to the age of robots. Two decades in the making, P3 from Japan's Honda Motor Company is a multi-million dollar postcard from the future. It's like looking at ourselves in a metal mirror. The impulse to recreate ourselves is basically as old as we have written documents about humans. Uh, we find traces of that in old Egypt, particularly in old Greek. And so it seems to be that the wish to recreate ourselves and to understand ourselves in that process belongs to the quest of being human. Five centuries ago, Leonardo da Vinci dissected the human body and imagined building it anew from mechanical parts. At the dawn of the machine age, we began to see the body as a machine. We believed we could recreate its intricate mechanisms with sprockets, levers, and clockwork gears. In the mid-1800s, one chess-playing machine amazed spectators around the world, until a young reporter named Edgar Allan Poe revealed that there was a person hidden inside. The 20th century opened with new fears about these automatons. Visions of artificial humans doing the bidding of mad scientists and evil capitalists. Were they mechanical masterworks or a glimpse of a future gone terribly wrong? In the real world, machines were becoming the focus of industry. In an assembly line age, they represented the ultimate worker able to do strenuous, repetitive jobs without complaint. In fact, the term robot came from the Czech word for forced labor. The birth of the computer endowed robots with simple brains to direct mechanical arms and do precision tasks. This spawned a new dream that machines could amount to something much more. Full-blown synthetic people. When there's a spot of ironing, Robert can't be beat to be neat with a fleet. You rector set humans, smart enough to do the chores. Robert has a quiet wit. And even offer a joke or two. And his charm is exceeded only by his industrious manner. Robert the robot never talks back. Rolo, answer the door. Still, we feared what they might become. Mechanical invaders hell-bent on enslaving us. They're mechanical, probably operated by someone we can't see. Tin men with evil written all over them. This ray gun ought to stop them. By the mid-1990s, billions of dollars had been spent developing artificial intelligence, stuffing computers with facts and rules of logic. 
trying to make them smart like us. In fact, programming artificial intelligence is turning out to be far more complex than we imagined. For biological creatures like us, thinking grows out of our ability to respond to the environment. Just walking down a crowded street, an action that seems simple to us, is incredibly tricky for a robot. Balance, perception, movement, navigation, the ability to adjust to a constantly changing landscape, all require a real-world instinct that is almost impossible to program in a robot. That's why the entire field of machine intelligence has now swung in a different direction. In numerous isolated labs around the world, researchers are adopting a revolutionary new goal to design bodies and minds in tandem. It's called the new robotics, and it is motivated by a powerful underlying idea. Only as robots interact with people and objects, only as they respond to physical stimuli and move through the real world, can they develop real intelligence. Getting a body and brain to work together is a monumental challenge. And yet that's the goal of an ambitious effort at Japan's Honda Motor Company. Here, technicians are focusing on a key test of the new robotics, walking. This action may seem simple to us, but it's highly complex when your brain has copper wires and your limbs are gears and pulleys. Walking takes a constant reassessment and rebalancing with each stride. Of course, it helps if you can put one foot in front of the other. Twenty years of work have paid off with the P3. P3 can only walk a mile an hour and its battery wears out after 20 minutes. But its balance is superb. Its motion fluid as it adjusts to an ever-shifting center of gravity. P3 can even negotiate stairs, a vertical obstacle course for a 250-pound creature. Keep the robot tethered, just in case. The success of the P3 has inspired a new prototype. Meet P3's cousin, the next generation walking robot. Better balanced, more nimble on its feet, and even more stylish. With sophisticated hip joints, this robot can turn as it walks and execute intricate patterns, coming ever closer to human movement. complexity of this motion was unthinkable just five years ago. Still, it's just the beginning. 